The idea of a staged alien invasion happening is very hard for people to take seriously. It's hard enough for people to accept the fact that 9-11 was an inside job. It's been 10 years since that day and since then, many more have died, not only overseas but here in the US. In fact, 9-11 is still claiming lives. Many of the 70,000 men and women that worked in the ruins of Ground Zero are suffering from life-threatening illnesses. Nearly 3,000 people died at the World Trade Center on 9-11, but the list of victims keeps growing. 70,000 men and women worked at the ruins at Ground Zero. Many now suffer from illnesses officially linked to the toxic smoke and dust, including respiratory and gastric diseases. Scott Pelley brought some of them together and found out, for them, 9-11 is a day that never ended. The World Trade Center is still claiming lives. People have had their lives shortened. People have lost their fathers, their, their mothers, to cancers, to lung diseases, anything that you can imagine, bloodborne diseases. People are still dying. Those illnesses include respiratory and gastric diseases such as gastroesophageal reflux, known as GERD. It was only this year that the federal government guaranteed medical coverage for these illnesses, but not coverage for cancer. Tyree Bacon is a former courthouse officer. Um, I have GERD, have the sinusitis, the rhinitis, I've had a sinus surgery already. Um, I, I just I have to laugh at the hypocrisy. We all heard in the beginning, the air was good, it's okay. Yeah. Now that very same government saying, well, cancer's not part of it. You gotta be kidding me. Yes, yes. yes. definitely. Well, yeah. what's the worst case scenario? You help somebody who got cancer who can't to the this country. That's the worst case scenario. We're going to go up a timeline of events that have happened. Some that you may have never heard of. Please watch the video till the end. We have an important message for you. If you have any doubt that a staged alien invasion can happen, then you might have missed the first one that happened in 1938. Tonight we will visit the scene of a crime so perfect that for almost 30 years no one knew that it had even taken place. The secret birth of a criminal conspiracy to rob not just one, but each and every bank vault in America all at the same time. And in between, we've got wars, assassinations, and Martians. In fact, if it weren't for the Martians, you might have heard about this mother of all conspiracies long ago. At precisely 8 p.m. on the evening of October 30th, 1938, the Mercury Radio Network interrupts the music of Ramon Raquello and his orchestra for a special news bulletin. A huge flaming object, believed to be a meteorite, fallen on a farm near Grover's Mill, New Jersey. Moments later comes a correction. It's not a meteorite, no, but incredibly, Martian cylinders falling all over the country. The famous War of the Worlds broadcast has begun. Welcome to California. With its terrifyingly real descriptions of an invasion from Mars, and before the night is out, a million people will run panicked into the streets. But what has been, for almost 50 years, a closely guarded secret is this. Orson Welles' broadcast was no mere show business stunt. It was an experiment in fear, a psychological warfare test conducted for the Rockefeller Foundation. And when the results were published two years later, they were available to only a few well-chosen people. An elite whose very existence is denied in our mainstream media who, safely hidden behind the curtain of history, may be pulling the strings of our government, our press, and even our Federal Reserve, may indeed be the masters of the universe. When you wave the white flag, you want to be friends? Hey there! Open up! Come on out! We're friends! Yeah! <laughs> The psychological warfare test, which we discovered in Orson Welles' broadcast, is crucial to any understanding of why some people feel that elite institutions like the Federal Reserve, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Bilderbergers pull the strings that we all dance on. The people who call conspiracy theorists conspiracy theorists are not the, are not the conspiracy theorists themselves, so to speak. So it's, um, 
get, we're talking about facts. We're talking about facts here. The Bilderberg Group does exist. The Federal Reserve does exist. The people who are members of the Bilderberg Group are also the people who do control the Federal Reserve. These are all facts. If a group can effectively control national governments, multinational corporations, and even our perceptions, they control the world. But the real founder, I believe, of, of the Bilderbergers was, was another man that I met through Jack Conley. Four years after the War of the World scare, there was an event that took place in California. Many people did not believe it was true at first because of the hoax in 1938. 1942. What do you think about this next event? Notice the location of the unknown aircraft being conveniently near the ocean where the military could fire at non -stop. The war had started. I was a 13-year-old kid. And this one night, which was February 1942, the sirens started wailing in the middle of the night. Blackout. And we'd had several blackouts before this. On February 25th, between the hours of 3.12 and 4.15 a.m., the 37th Coast Artillery Brigade in Los Angeles fired off a barrage of anti-aircraft shells at an unidentified flying object. Watchers on the rooftop of the Columbia Broadcasting Building in the heart of Hollywood could plainly see the flashes of guns and searchlights sweeping the skies in a wide arc along the coastal area. I think what woke me up initially was the sound of anti-aircraft guns. I jumped out of bed and my parents were up. My father was an air raid warden. He figured this has to be the real thing. And very quickly afterward, I saw, we all saw, a flight of planes following the track of the object, going overhead anywhere from three to five interceptors, uh, clearly piston-driven U.S. planes. No one has ever admitted that those planes were in the sky. Our first thought immediately was a Japanese observation plane. Later, the Japanese records definitively proved there were no Japanese planes over Southern California that night or indeed ever. After ruling out the possibility that a Japanese plane had invaded American airspace, Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox attributed the incident to war nerves. But Secretary of War Henry Stimson quickly refuted this explanation, defensively declaring that an actual aircraft had been the target of the assault. To this day, no one seems to know just what or who was hovering over Los Angeles that night. Moving up to 1947, you might have heard of the Roswell crash in New Mexico. What you might not have heard of is that early this year, April 2011, the FBI has released top secret documents exposing the existence of extraterrestrial life. That was actually perpetrated by one Silas Newton. This memo used to be available in a package of documents from the Fund for UFO Research. It has been uh, on the web for at least 10 years or so, and supposedly um, there's no validity to it, even though it was based on um, rumors and supposed facts. Uh, this uh, Silas Newton was supposedly uh, a con man and uh, got this out there big time to try to get some funding for some oil uh, ventures. But uh, according to Dr. Bruce McAbee and, and others, uh, this, this document uh, is a hoax. Um, you know, I, I have to say that there's many, many things out there that are actually credible, and uh, uh, there are many, many uh, uh, documents as well as sightings that have um, uh, real fundamental uh, data to it that shows that, they, that we have been visited by um, advanced technology uh, that's gracing our skies well, worldwide, not only, not only for decades, uh, as this would say, but also for, for centuries. 
Well, and, and Doctor, I mean, when you look at some of the material that's contained in this FBI file, I mean, they took it seriously. At the time, they sent this to the director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, and there were a lot of they folks did. who thought there was something to this. Um, you say it's a hoax, they but did. some folks are going are gonna to look to the FBI and say, now that's a legitimate agency. Is there more to this? Exactly, and it did give it did give it credibility, and and I can't sit here and say that it that it was definitely a hoax. I'm just um, uh, actually sharing what Dr. Bruce McAvee has investigated himself uh, over the decades. And uh, at the time, to quote, uh, the Air Force uh, had stated that that nothing was flying in the air, but um, at, at this time they did go to to. Uh, to Hoover, there was a project Grudge and Sign and, and Snowbird, and uh, the only public study at the time was Project Blue Book, uh, which was closed in 1969 with the statement that uh, UFOs are not a threat to national security. Well, how did they know that unless they were studying it? Um, and as we see in the, in the uh, mass sighting that happened in Arizona in 1997 called the Phoenix Lights, there were thousands of people statewide for many hours that, that actually saw a mile to two mile wide craft traverse the entire state.